Thank you. Um, Vice President, High Commissioner, Excellencies, distinguished delegates, fellow panelists, uh, Afghan friends, thank you for inviting me to participate in this dialogue. I'm here purely in a personal capacity as someone with a little knowledge of transitional justice processes. As calls for accountability in Afghanistan grow louder, I would like to offer some reflections on how justice and accountability have been pursued in other countries in transition, particularly within the Middle East and North Africa region and Muslim societies. Specifically, I'll touch on the experiences of Iraq, Morocco, Syria, and Tunisia. One important lesson we have learned is the importance of consulting victims and survivors about their justice-based needs and priorities. We should never assume they are unable to articulate their needs or that the international community is better placed to prioritize for them. In Iraq, after the fall of Saddam Hussein, a small countrywide survey of victims and survivors carried out in 2003-04 revealed a rich understanding of what those justice-based needs were. While victims spoke clearly about justice being the opposite of what the state had provided at the time, for example, torture and midnight um, trials and disappearances, and they stressed the need to bring perpetrators to account, they also emphasized the need to find their missing relatives and the responsibility of the state to compensate them for their experience. They also clearly differentiated between those who were most responsible for violations and had given the orders, and those who had carried them out while fearing the consequences if they disobeyed orders. Those results should have been more utilized in developing the pathway to achieving justice in Iraq. Policies like debathification left little room for just such the differentiation, and ultimately may have led to the failure of the justice project imposed from outside with little consultation. In Morocco, surveyed families prioritized the right to, to truth and reparations, while also supporting the need to hold accountable those most responsible for the crimes of torture and disappearance. In Tunisia, tackling corruption and reforming the judiciary were among the highest priorities when sections of the population were surveyed in 2012. Discourses on justice also included the need to tackle long-term social exclusion and regional inequality. Vice President, as we can see time and again, an overarching outcome from such consultations is that the justice-based needs of victims and survivors will not be met by relying only on courts and criminal accountability. It's a vital part, but it's not the whole story. In Morocco, the families prioritized seeking the truth about their missing relatives, while also highlighting the need for reparations, reforms, and criminal justice. Initially, the state prioritized the path of reparations, perhaps hoping this might suffice, suffice but quickly discovered that without revealing the truth about what had taken place, this effort was stymied. A truth commission was established, which uncovered much of the truth and laid the path for a massive reparations program and legal and institutional reforms. Criminal justice remains elusive, but has not been officially ruled out. In Syria, civil society groups sought recourse to the International Criminal Court, but found the route via the Security Council blocked, so they worked with the General Assembly to establish an international institution in 2016 to ensure the focus on criminal justice in Syria. Their efforts also expanded to utilizing and assisting universal jurisdiction and national jurisdictions, 16 to date, to bring perpetrators to account in over 185 countries. Syria have, has also provided us with an important lesson, which is seeking to pursue criminal accountability or getting to the truth about missing relatives is not an, an either-or choice. Both can be pursued in a complementary way. So in addition to the focus on criminal justice, the families of victims and survivors forged a way ahead that focused on the right to truth and persuaded the General Assembly to set up an international institution that's focused on the missing and the disappeared. Vice President, in conclusion, my message is simple 
When it comes to justice and accountability, we must draw lessons from relevant past experiences in the region and beyond. We must embrace a broader understanding of justice that goes beyond criminal accountability. And most importantly, we must give voice to the victims, the survivors and their families, allowing their needs and priorities to shape the path forward. I thank you.